I'm not saying take down street names, I'm not saying tear down the buildings. I'm just saying that the slave's name should be up there with them. Hi, my name's Laura, and I'm going to tell you a little bit of why I see Glasgow differently to the majority of people who live here. When you walk around, whether it's go to dinner, go to work, go shopping, you see street names, you see statues, but what you don't realise is that they're named after the men who own plantations in Jamaica and America. So we're just about to turn onto Glassford Street, named after John Glassford, who was a plantation owner in Maryland and Virginia. His family's portrait hangs in the People's Palace, and if you look close enough, you can see what they've tried to paint out. And what they've tried to paint out is a black slave. So from Glassford Street, we walk onto another plantation owner, Ingram Street, which is named after Archibald Ingram. And at the bottom of Ingram Street is the Gallery of Modern Art. It was formerly William Cunningham's home, his mansion, that he paid £10,000 for. Off of the back of the plantations he owned in Jamaica, he owned 300 slaves. So after going to the Gallery of Modern Art, we had the Style Mile, Buchanan Street. And yes, you guessed it, Andrew Buchanan was a plantation owner. So we've left Style Mile, Buchanan Street, we've headed down back to Burton City, and we're at Dunlop Street. And guess what? Another plantation owner. I've walked less than a mile, and I've had to walk past street names and buildings that are named after five plantation owners. So some may argue that it was a different time, and yes, it was, but should they have their names immortalized in the street names and the places that they built with slave money? I'm not saying take down street names, I'm not saying tear down buildings, I'm just saying that the slave's name should be up there with them.